Robert, thanks for joining us here in the Chime Studios here in Phoenix. The Lucido name has been popular and prominent in the real estate space for a while now, but for those of us who may be new or not quite as familiar, why don't you give us a background of yourself in Lucido Global? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Buzz Randy, thanks for having us out here. I'm the CSO over at Lucido Global. Uh, I joined the company about three years ago now. Um, as you mentioned, you know, the company has been around for a while. It's pretty well known in the real estate community. Uh, before Lucido Global, Bob and Tracy had a company called Builders First Choice, which was actually, they grew, bootstrapped it up to be the second largest builder marketing company, new homes and land sales company in the United States. And with the height of the crash coming, Bob and Tracy saw that coming and made a decision to shut all that down. Seven offices. Wow. Um, and, and completely shifted. And that afternoon, Bob was out knocking on doors to get his first listing. And that's when they started Builders, uh, Bob Lucido team, mm -hmm. which then has now grown into Lucido Global. Excellent, excellent. So it started with door knocking and now you're in how many states? Yeah, so now we're in 15 states and in Canada. Mm -hmm. uh, we just launched our second location in Canada. Uh, we are approaching 400 team up, 400 partners. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have 42 locations right now. Wow, that's phenomenal. Why don't we talk a little bit about uh, what it's like to transition from a legacy software to a new CRM? Because if we're being honest, that is probably the scariest part of the entire um, process, really. I would say there are a lot of organizations out there that would rather continue with the pain of their current system than go through the pain of transition. You know, change is scary and um, many data companies, many companies out there today make it difficult to cleanly export and import your data. So uh, you spent a lot of time making sure that that wasn't the case for y'all. And while nothing is perfect, I would say if we were to model a transition process after anyone, it would have been what, what you did. So why don't you tell us a little bit about where your head was, some of the steps you took and how we were able to help facilitate that. Yeah, let me start from, I guess, from the beginning behind that decision. Sure. Because it wasn't an easy decision. And like you said, a lot of people will be reluctant to make a decision to make such a large change, especially if you are in multiple states, multiple markets, have a lot of partners. Sure. People are inherently biased to the status quo, like you said. They're naturally mm -hmm. change re resistant, they're risk adverse. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes people take into account the cost or the disruption of change, mm -hmm. but they don't take into account, they don't pay enough attention to the cost of not changing. Mm -hmm. And we're of the mindset that basically we're in this wave of innovation where, you know, the even in market incumbents that have a lot of market share right now, mm -hmm. if they refuse to innovate, if they refuse re refuse to take advantage of the new technologies, the new strategies that are coming about right now, they're going to quickly become, you know, increasingly sidelined, watching mm -hmm. either incumbents or newcomers who do seize those opportunities, uh, increasingly taking market share from them. Mm -hmm. So, with that in mind, we went through a process of, you know, at first we did is uh, we we pursue all the different players in the market, see which ones were viable options for us. Sure. and then approach those partners and basically construct different tr test trials mm -hmm. with those with those partners. So with Chime, we ran a three month trial mm -hmm. where we ran concurrent softwares, concurrent CRM platforms, and tried to make it as apples to apples of a comparison as possible. Certainly. So we normalized ad spend. We, uh, we tried to normalize for having the same people operating in the platform and so forth. We tried to make it as close of a comparison as possible and we did that for three months. Mm -hmm. So what, um, what, what were those three months like? Well, we quickly were able to see where our shortcomings were on our legacy platform. Mm -hmm. but that being said, we weren't able to control for everything. There were certain factors that we could not normalize for, we couldn't control for. Like, for example, that the fact that our legacy CRM had our domain authority, sure. BobLacidoTeam.com, LacidoGlobal.com. So we couldn't control for that. That was an advantage to our legacy CRM. Mm -hmm. And we couldn't control for the fact that the ad campaigns for our legacy CRM had years worth of data behind them mm -hmm. and the benefit of years worth of optimizations. Absolutely. And despite that, Chime 2X'd everything in those three months. Excellent. So despite all of these hurdles within 90 days, you were able to see a noticeable impact of, of what Chime's innovation brings to the industry. Oh, absolutely. And I mean, 
Our ISAs who had been trained on Boomtown at first were risk adverse. They, they didn't like the disruption of migrating to a new CRM, especially because for those three months, they had to work on two separate CRMs at the same time. Mm -hmm. So that was asking a lot for them and they managed to that. And I remember our, our top performing ISA came to me about two weeks after he had been initially reluctant mm -hmm. and said, this platform's amazing. Can I just work just on China? Wow. So we had to force him to continue working with <laughs> us. Um, but so, yeah, so for, with, with Lucido Global, we're increasingly focused on capturing the listings. Mm -hmm. If you own the listings, you own the market. Mm -hmm. So when crafting this trial, we just didn't want more conversions. We wanted higher quality conversions. Mm -hmm. And we wanted higher quality conversions of the right kinds of opportunities, namely listings at high average sale prices. Okay. So, you know, it, in this trial, Chime, we, almost, we doubled the number of conversions, but again, that wasn't enough. We wanted listing conversions, so we doubled those listing conversions. Mm -hmm. And then our average price point of those listing conversions went up $230,000. The average price point of the listing conversions increased $230,000. Correct, over the legacy Previous. platform in that same period. Wow, that's that number alone, 230,000 is, is quite a sum of money. That's probably, five to six thousand dollars in an agent's pocket as a commission check yeah absolutely. so that is a that's a big improvement uh very quickly i might add so with that being said let's peel back some of those numbers you said you increased the listing conversion by twofold help me uh understand that a little bit better that was twice as many contracts opportunities that was that was conversion to agreement to agreement okay so so not you... just a warm transfer but that was twice as many signed listing agreements. Correct. So if you look at it, the best barometer of whether it was a good opportunity was whether you were able to get an agreement from it. Mm -hmm. If you look at the top of the funnel, leads convert to appointments, those mm -hmm. appointments convert to agreements, mm -hmm. and then those agreements convert to closings. Right. So that's the general funnel mm -hmm. of, of lead generation, business generation. Mm -hmm. We use agreements as the best barometer of lead quality. Mm -hmm. And because that's what's ultimately going to put money in the pocket of the company, but also of our partners. Right. And and so that's why we were laser focused on that. So again, we are only looking at a 90 day window. So we were making as demanding of a trial as possible for you guys to earn our business. Mm -hmm. Basically, what we were saying is the average timeline of a lead converting an Internet lead is six to eight months. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to say, how good is this platform? Can you do it in 90 days? Mm -hmm. And to be frank, we knew we were asking a lot. And when and that filtered out some other CRM platforms. Sure. We wanted someone that had confidence in their platform that they could take a risk and say, you know, we're gonna bet on ourselves for a 90 day window. Mm -hmm. And within those 90 days, how many of the leads converted to agreements? Mm -hmm. And Chime doubled. That's phenomenal. So your barometer for success is conversion percentage rather than cost per lead. Yeah, CPL is frankly, I mean, don't get me wrong, CPL has an important component to it. Sure. But if that's your sole focus, mm -hmm. there's a reason why people are just throwing that out there. It's a nice little tagline, it's a sure. sucker line. You know, if, if that's your sole focus, meaning how you run your business generation is just solely based on CPL, mm -hmm. you're missing the boat and yes. you're missing the end result. Yes. Because if, if you spend, you know, 200 bucks and you get 100 leads, $2 CPL, Yep. If none of those leads convert, your the cost of it is negative two hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And the cost of your lead was negative two dollars. Right. So if, if that's your if your focus starts there and ends there, mm -hmm. you're missing the boat. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And from our perspective, what we've seen happen in the real estate industry was there was a long period of just next to nil adoption of technology. Right. Uh, very little innovation going on. And then as technology will do. It innovated very quickly. The speed and quality of the technology improved uh, dramatically. Um, however, people were still focused on cost per lead, which was the old, old school way of, of judging success. And, and quite frankly, from a technology company's perspective, that's the easiest way for a technology company to judge success. If I, I it is difficult for a technology company to collect costs per acquisition, cost per conversion information. There's only a few organizations like yours that actually track that data as closely and accurately as you do. So because a cost per lead data point is 
the only data point that technology companies can really offer. It's what agents have been willing to accept as an acceptable data point. They don't necessarily have the wherewithal to determine what their cost per conversion is because it's a little harder. It's not something that can be easily handed to them by a technology company, uh, but you had the wherewithal to understand that cost per conversion is where money is made or money is lost. Yeah, it's more abstract. It's, it's exactly, it's harder to, to pinpoint exactly how much it is and that there's gonna be a large array of that. Sure. There's no way to, to really track that from a, a CRM standpoint. A, a, and to be frank, CPL, like it says, it has a little bit of merit, but it's mm -hmm. largely a sales tactic. And you're gonna see a lot of, a lot of different sales campaigns pushing like, you know, our CPL is down 20% year over year. Or we're gonna sure. get you $2 leads. Sure. Well, to be frank, like you honestly, you get what you pay for. Mm -hmm. And and if you're paying, if you're gonna spend, you know, a thousand bucks, 10,000 bucks, 100,000 bucks on, on leads and you get a $2 CPL, mm -hmm. what you're not taking into account is the cost of the human capital, the man hours mm -hmm. to qualify, to sift through all those opportunities and then to convert those opportunities. Mm -hmm. And, and that's a significant port, part of, of cost mm -hmm. for running a real estate business, especially if you have an ISA team as increasingly, you know, most large teams are, are building out right now. Absolutely. So if you're spending a ton of money on really cheap leads and your conversion rate on them is 1%, less than 1%, mm -hmm. what you're missing is the cost of all the dollars you're investing mm -hmm. to sift through all these crap leads mm -hmm. that aren't converting, that aren't gonna put any money in the bank. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. The burden that comes with converting a large volume of leads is oftentimes not worth the squeeze, right? So you do need to balance that lead volume with human capital and lead conversion and finding that proper balance can be difficult, but clearly within 90 days you were able to do it. Um, and, and that takes effort from all sides, right? Chime is, is, as well as Lucido Global. So let's yeah, and, and it's not just about doing enough to make your money back. Right. If you do this effectively, your multiple, your return on mm -hmm. it is gonna be off the charts. And so even if you could, like let's say you do make, an, you do convert enough of these low quality leads mm -hmm. to make your money back, maybe you make twice your money back. Sure. If you manage it effectively saying like, you know, you only have 40 hours of work week per ISA a week. Right. How do you want to allocate those hours? Do you want it to allocate to these lower quality opportunities where maybe they'll convert one out of hundred? Mm -hmm. Or do you want to allocate it to higher quality opportunities that are going to convert two or three out of hundred? Absolutely. A and that's what it's really about is about optimizing every possible opportunity, every possible lever in your process mm -hmm. so that the end result is maximum ROI. Absolutely. And, and the beauty of real estate is commission checks have the potential to be very large. So the difference between three and one extra commission check a month is significant, especially like you said, with an increase of almost a quarter of a million dollars in your average opportunity, that is life changing money for the company, for the partners. That isn't just, um, that isn't just covering costs anymore. You're living, you're living a new life, lifestyle after seeing those types of uh, increase in conversions. So that's really impressive. Now, let's uh, take me to day 91. It's decision day, the 90 day trial is up. What was the, what conversations were taking place? At day 91, when we made the decision to, to transition, mm -hmm. then it became how. Mm -hmm. How do we most effectively create this structure? So, you know, a lot of people will shy away from that change. We leaned into it. We saw the change as an opportunity. Mm -hmm. So in the fact that we were going to have disruption, mm -hmm. well then just accept it and say, okay, how can we take advantage of this opportunity where we're already going to be transitioning and causing disruption mm -hmm. to, to change other things, to make this as beneficial as possible. So it wasn't just a lateral move from our legacy CRM to a new CRM, just transferring leads, you know, horizontally. Right. It was let's let's create a new framework. Let's create a you know a more efficient framework. Mm -hmm. Let's fully take advantage of Chime's platform to make it even more effective. That mindset is the absolute difference. It's the absolute difference. Some people will see a bad opportunity and their mindset will make it twice as bad as it as, as it should be. With your mindset of this is an opportunity that's going to be difficult, but we're going to make the most of it. Obviously, we've already seen success and that mindset is a huge contribution to that so yeah i mean in the launch call 
Thank you. I appreciate it. Obviously, we're, we're very cognizant of any disruption. You know, when you're dealing with hundreds of partners, mm -hmm. agents tend not to like disruption. They right. want to manage their business. They don't want to change. They learn a process. You get them to adopt that process. You don't want to change the process. Sure. I get it. So we're always cognizant of that. And so we had we, we were focused on mitigating those things. So we we're basically making sure we showed enough value in the new platform that they were more excited about the new platform mm -hmm. than they were, you know, nervous about leaving their current way of operating. Certainly. And when we had our launch call, honestly, it was the most enthusiasm we have had on any of our announcements or any of our weekly calls when we were rolling out new services. So <laughs> to be frank, I didn't get any negative pushback, which was like Wow. shocking to me. Wow. Yeah. That, <laughs> that's incredible. Yeah. So I know you know you did this in phases, right? The, the launch, it wasn't just one rug pull and here's a new CRM. Enjoy. There was, there was a, a, a process to that. Was, uh, was Chime helpful in that? Was that something that you completely handled on your own? Um, wh what did we do, if anything, to make that easier for you? So Chime was helpful in creating new strategies and how we were going to set up what, what I call our website infrastructure or CRM infrastructure. So, you know, how did we want to build it out so that we could, you know, basically solve some of our current pain points in the process mm -hmm. uh, that we were having on our previous CRM. Mm -hmm. So again, it wasn't that horizontal move. It was like, okay, we are going to move when I move and when I get, when we get to our end, end destination, I want to mm -hmm. fix A, B, and C. Mm -hmm. How can we do it? And that's where Chime came in. And mm -hmm. your tech team was extremely helpful in setting up our new websites, coordinating with the different MLSs. We're obviously connected to a lot of MLSs. Um, and, and so Chime was very, very helpful in, in that regard. Mm -hmm. I would like to, to pat ourselves on the back in, in the sense that we, we have changed uh, our culture to be partner focused rather than vendor focused. I do believe there's a difference between a vendor and a, a partner in your business. And I'm just really excited to hear that uh, we were able we were able to come through in, in this instance. So that's great news. Um, let's talk a little bit more about uh, those launch call with the agents. What was some examples of that positive feedback? Um, are there any you know immediate success stories that we have? Just tell me what you think was going through the mind of some of your partners because that change generally is not met with. With, with joy the way you might have experienced. So I would love to hear uh, what their mindset was and, and, and how they saw their, bene their business benefit. Well, one of our team leaders was frustrated with our previous CRM. Mm -hmm. um, and she had actually gone out to get a different CRM that she was paying for on her dime. And she was in the process of migrating that week when we announced. And I remember she called me right after and you know, she's our absolute rock star. Yeah. Um, but she has very high expectations. Sure. And um, so she called me and she goes, you guys did something right here. <laughs> <laughs> and so she terminated her other CRM sure. and she's migrated her whole database to the new CRM. And I could go into different examples of, of different feedback. Uh, I'll just pass along videos. Sure. <laughs> but, but what I can say is that, you know, a lot of people are focused on adoption. How do you quantify adoption? How do you measure it? Mm -hmm. One of the things I will say, and this was one of the biggest factors in why we picked Chime, mm -hmm. was the fact that agents can import their private database mm -hmm. and only they will have access to that private database. Mm -hmm. So by bifurcating team leads and private and personal leads was a major, major thing for us. Um, and so one of the ways you could assess adoption for your platform is how many agents are importing their personal leads, their private database into mm -hmm. Chime. And that's immensely higher than mm -hmm. it was in our previous CRM. So you're able to see that agents have in fact imported data, but because of that private setting, you're not able to access the data. So I can't see how mm -hmm. many leads they've put in, mm -hmm. but I do know they have mm -hmm. because they call me, they tell me, they ask for help, they ask for advice in doing that import process. Sure. Um, and you know, one of our agents who's a top producer for us, mm -hmm. um, she had never put her private database into our CRM. She's been with us for years. Mm -hmm. In fact, I don't think she's ever used a CRM. Ooh. And she called me uh, two weeks ago and she told me that she had put her private database into John. Mm -hmm. And so I'm... talking about adoption, it's not only getting someone to start using a CRM for the first time, which is like the first step of a adoption process, sure. but to get someone to put their private database. Agents are, agents are natu naturally cautious. Sure. And that makes sense to us. And this is one of the things we said in the launch call. It's like, 
it's your livelihood. We get why you would ha want to have an extra layer of protection around it, mm -hmm. especially if you decide, you know, like we're no longer delivering enough value to you. You found another opportunity you wanted to pursue. So we got that. Mm -hmm. And our previous CRM, if they had entered their personal leads into the CRM, it would have just gone into the same pot. Mm -hmm. And it's incredibly hard to separate private leads from team leads and it becomes contentious between company and agent. Mm -hmm. And we never wanted to be in that situation. And so we knew that if we could get our partners to import their private database into the CRM, just by using nat like averages, like nationwide averages, they would see about a 20% increase in their production just by using a CRM. And that's just an average CRM, not a good CRM, which frankly, we've invested a ton into to building out mm -hmm. to maximizing all of its capabilities. Mm -hmm. So one of the biggest goals in migrating to Chime was, was to find a platform that would respect that privacy around their private database, mm -hmm. which would make them that much more inclined to not only use the CRM, but to import their private database into mm -hmm. the CRM and take advantage of all its, its functionalities. Mm -hmm. I think that is a, just another great mindset that is vastly underrated, right? The, the dynamic of respecting that privacy for that partner is going to generate greater partner and company revenue, right? Getting them to use the CRM, statistically it's undeniable, an agent who uses a CRM versus who doesn't is going to, going yeah. to sell more homes. And, and you see this is not just with real estate technology. Mm -hmm. Privacy is increasingly more of an issue with all technology. Sure. And to some, in some extent, those are antithetical, you know, privacy around Facebook or all the different social media companies. Um, and you see that they pushed out different updates. The fact that Chime had already had that level of privacy around it, where other CRMs don't, was a big win for us. A and giving that level of security to our partners to again, not only get them to put their private input, uh, their private database into Chime, mm -hmm. but then once it's in there, to really take advantage, to dive in deep, to learn how to leverage smart plans, the property alerts, the market reports, how mm -hmm. they can use their 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 uh, their agent website to capture leads, uh, mm -hmm. how can they use the the agent uh, questionnaires for open houses to capture leads, to synchronize that with smart plans. There's so much the platform can do, mm -hmm. and they would never know that they're standing on a pile of gold unless they get in there, unless they get their private database in there. Mm -hmm. So that's that was a big win for for us and for our partners. So I'm glad you bring up smart plans because this is a key feature of Chime that I think often is underrepresented or or possibly uh, misunderstood as far as what it can do for your business. Many, many agents, many people will simply consider smart plans to be, a, you know, Chime's vernacular for drip campaigns. But like you said, it can do much more than that. So if you wouldn't mind, Maybe from an agent's perspective, sure. help us understand what smart plans can bring and, to the business. And I'll be I'll be frank. In our introductory call, when yeah. you said when I asked you what's the best part about Chime and you said smart plans, I was thinking drip plans and I was like, well, if that's the best, then whatever. But once I got in there, mm -hmm. once I dove in and started figuring out if I can do this, then I can do this, then I can do this, I can take this, connect it with this. Mm -hmm. If you master smart plans in Chime, mm -hmm. you're off to the races. It is the single largest, most impactful, most important thing you can do on Chime. And smart plans, like you said, are strikingly different than drip plans. Mm -hmm. They're not just for lead generation. And once you get your head, head around that, you figure out how much you can automate with your mm -hmm. campaign. We use smart plans not only for lead generation, we use them for database management where we automate different database management tasks, mm -hmm. you know, shifting it to current clients, former clients, having this happen in, in real time without any additional uh, work from our partners. Mm -hmm. We also use them for quality control. Okay. So take automating different task lists when different things happen. Mm -hmm. So if you think about adoption is always a focal point from brokerages, from teams and so forth. And, and the prototypical way they go about adoption is you have trainings, maybe they're required trainings. Uh, you show them how to do something and then you try to police them and hold them accountable and you check in. Mm -hmm. And when you're dealing with independent contractors, that's not really a highly effective thing, no. especially if you have more than five or 10 partners. Sure. And so it, it's a, it, it's a really important thing when you're dealing with a successful company, when mm -hmm. you're dealing with a successful team that has tens and tens, if not hundreds of partners. Mm -hmm. And so that prototypical way of policing engagement and adoption fails flat. And you're going to waste so much time just chasing your tail around trying to get agents to adopt these different things mm -hmm. and then to try to find ways to see if they're actually doing it. 
<laughs> or you could take the approach of using smart plans to automate different task lists. Sure. So as a lead comes in, as a lead does something, some trigger sets off a, ta a smart plan, mm -hmm. which triggers a task list. Now that agent gets a task list saying, do this, do this, do this. Mm -hmm. And that's teaching them those good skill sets mm -hmm. in real time mm -hmm. on every lead that hits those marks. Mm -hmm. And it, it's right there for them. It requires no additional work. You don't have to train them on it. It tells them what to do. And with that repeti re uh, repetition and all that practice, they're going to develop the, that skill set. Absolutely. So if you want to use adoption, if you want to increase adoption, again, it roots back to smart plans. Yeah. And so what it sounds like is you remove the critical thinking component from a you know partner's perspective, from a technology company's perspective. Uh, we want to make it as easy as possible for the agent to log in and know this is what I need to do today. There shouldn't be any questions regarding what am I supposed to do with this. Um, so by using these checklists, you're effectively spelling it out for the agents in plain English. This is what you need to do today. And by doing so, you increase their effectiveness because they don't experience that uh, paralysis by analysis type. Um, yeah. And it's also because, you know, if you're a soldier on the ground, you don't have the view of the full battlefield. Sure. You know, so by nature of us having view of every partner in the market, mm -hmm. every partner across the country and in Canada, we can see what's working, what's not working. We, we have a bigger view of the field. Sure. So we're able to update these task lists and say, okay, this task is really working well here. If we do this, this is going to increase your conversion rate. Whether they realize it or not, you know, something as simple as, you know, correcting capitalization of the name. Um, so that when smart plans engage, people mm -hmm. think, you know, it gives the impression that it's more of a personal touch. Certainly. Um, so those are all kinds of things that we're able to do through smart plans to accomplish our end goals rather than just saying like, cross your fingers and say, please use the CRM. If you would only use the CRM and do this, I promise yep. you're going to get results. They're seeing the value and that's why they're getting on. And then mm -hmm. once we get them on, we're going to make it easier and easier for them to do the right things. And from a company perspective, it makes you significantly stickier, right? There's far less of an opportunity for an agent or for a partner to leave for you know another opportunity if you have it spelled out that easy for them to use. I mean, is that a reach or? No, I mean, technology is clearly a retention tool. Mm -hmm. You know, with prototypical brokerage model, it's recruiting and retention. Yep. Uh, you know, we're a little bit different because we're, you know, not only just a brokerage in Maryland, but we're a team. So, you know, you have to deliver more value than that. A and that's why we're so focused on technology because, you know, in, in previous years, we could roll out a program or we could roll out a different feature in Maryland. Mm -hmm. But we could not roll out that same feature or the same product or same service in different markets. Technology was inherently something that we could not only deliver the same value in Maryland mm -hmm. as we could in every other market to every other partner. Mm -hmm. So if you're a team looking to expand to go into new markets, technology is the easiest way for you to deliver more value at the same exact cost. Mm -hmm. that's, that's phenomenal. That, scale, that ability to scale doesn't exist without that technology partner. No, and it's, I would even go as far as to say, if you don't have the technology, it's going to break down. Mm -hmm. It's like, you're going to spend so much time trying to chase your tail, doing the same tasks or trying to get information or trying to, you know, if you're, we have this in every day we have partner. So we're based out of Maryland. Mm -hmm. We have partners in Florida, California, Texas, Canada, Washington state. Mm -hmm. We're covering, you know, every region. Every we time just zone. brought on. Yeah. Every time zone, we just brought on Kansas, Missouri, and Colorado. There's no way that you can measure and and try to monitor and hold all these agents accountable and track everything they're doing and you know control for every situation or keep track of every issue that arises unless you're effectively using technology mm -hmm. you know something as simple as like let's say you're trying to run a lead generation report let's say you're trying to look at your you know first your cpl then you're trying to look at how many of those lead opportunities converted to the different stages of the conversion funnel you know, just running that report mm -hmm. without a technology platform is going to take you forever. Mm -hmm. And then by the time you finish that report, it's all outdated. Yeah. It's no longer applicable. Mm -hmm. So if you want to compete in today's market, tomorrow's market, you need to be able to make quick decisions based upon real time data. Sure. And that real time data needs to come to you quickly because as the world keeps moving faster and faster, mm -hmm. so does that data get more and more outdated mm -hmm. quicker and quicker. And so I know and believe Chime is a very robust platform, but we're not the um, 
the only piece of technology you use in your business. However, everything starts with your CRM and other pieces of technology get layered onto it, right? Sure. Because that's your foundation where your data is really coming from and maybe then being interpreted by other pieces of technology. So with that, if your CRM is reluctant to, to integrate with other services, um, then it can be really difficult to have that real-time data and make informed decisions. So that being said, how is Chime, how, are we playing well with others? How, how do we work with uh, your other technology vendors? Yeah, you guys partners? are playing well in the sandbox. <laughs> um, so there were three primary reasons what, why, we, why we switched. Okay. And aside from just the base technology, the second most important one was the willingness and ability to effectively integrate. A lot of issues that arise with technology, with data quality, with you know information, is that you have separate platforms. Mm -hmm. Separate platforms means separate databases, separate data sets. Mm -hmm. And so at the very least, it requires you to do the same thing two times. And you need to do it exactly alike, or in, mm -hmm. or you have inconsistent data sets. Mm -hmm. And as you do that with hundreds and hundreds of partners, you can see how awry that data goes. Yeah, very quickly. And and so basically, two years ago, trying to do different reports, trying to track these leads to the settlement table, mm -hmm. there wasn't a way for me to do it effectively. I had to basically go off names, and you can imagine how many different ways there's to put in names. Sure. You know. Do they have middle name? Do they have middle initial? Do they misspell mm -hmm. it? Do they have extra spaces? Do they have, you know, junior, the fourth? There's so many different ways. Or if it's a husband and wife, like, mm -hmm. you know, was it, you know, Francis Smith or Francis and Maria Smith? Like, mm -hmm. so it just broke down very quickly. And so if, if you, you know, it's not just enough mm -hmm. to have a platform that, that, that has good technology, mm -hmm. you really need to have a, good technology platform or good CRM that's fully integrated with how you process your business mm -hmm. to ensure that consistent data set. Mm -hmm. Now, Chime was the most willing to integrate that we came across, bottom line. You, so you guys were incredibly responsive with, with your technology support. I know personally we've put in numerous requests that your tech team has got out right on and you've already rolled out series, uh, a series of updates for us. All things that are able to help us accomplish our end goal. Mm -hmm. Your integration team has been fantastic working with the integration platforms of other technology platforms we use. Mm -hmm. So so that was a huge factor to ensure not just uh, consistent data sets, mm -hmm. but also the elimination of redundant work. Mm -hmm. Everything we do at Lucido Global is about optimizing the value of time. Mm -hmm. We know that if a partner invests his or her, an hour of his or her time into our business, that's an hour that he or she didn't spend with her family, her kids on vacation, mm -hmm. going to a ball game, whatever he or she would want to do, mm -hmm. she can't do because she chose to invest that hour into her business. Mm -hmm. We love that. We want to ensure that he or she gets maximum return mm -hmm. on that hour invested. Mm -hmm. And so everything we do is backed out. Okay, you want to make, you want to make X number of dollars in a year. This is the value of your time that you need to achieve on an hourly basis. Mm -hmm. How can we get you there? And so something as simple as, you know, automating a task that ordinarily they would have to do manually. The small things are often the most important things because we do them so often mm. that it stacks up. Absolutely. So in real time, you think, oh, it's just a small thing. It only takes me two minutes. Mm -hmm. But when you compound that day over day, week over week, month over month, that adds up. Mm -hmm. And all those little things adds up. Mm -hmm. and, and so we're focused on making it as easy as possible for our partners to increase their value of time. So I'll give you one, one easy barometer. When we migrated to Chime through our integration, we mm -hmm. were able to eliminate 41% of our data entry. Wow. Right that's off a the large bat. number. Right off the bat. So that's, you know, for every, every piece of business that they would have to enter through a form, Mm -hmm. we eliminated fundamentally 40 percent of it so that's increasingly like especially for top producers that's a lot of time mm -hmm. that's hours a month you know and, and on like a calendar basis it was basically like a whole work week of time saving wow so then furthermore once they get the data in there they'll never have to re-enter it again because it's in our data set it's pushing back and forth across the integration mm -hmm. so those are two small things again like you know maybe someone doesn't recognize it right out the beginning. 
but mm. those things adds up mm. and we see it because we have partners having career years taking full advantage of the different platforms we see mm. it from our isa team which is the easiest way for us to test different things and see results in real time sure that makes sense yeah and when you add those small things up and you result in a full work week of time saved that's either another week of you able uh, for, for you to increase your income or another week at the beach another week on vacation with the family right so uh, the ability for technology to improve your life whether it's an opportunity to earn more business or an opportunity to spend more time doing things that you love uh, that is absolutely a, a measure of success for a technology company yeah and if you if you think about it who has the most value for those innovations mm -hmm. your top producers the people that have the most value to your business mm -hmm. and and if you're talking about retention or recruiting you know our model for recruiting is increasingly becoming higher and higher producers and when you're going to them those are the people that technology can have the most benefit to mm -hmm. because when they're doing the same things over and over again for 40 50 60 transactions a year mm -hmm. What you notice is that typically an individual agent will cap at around, you know, at most probably doing 40 transactions a year. Just directly speaking, that's typically the ceiling for an individual agent. Okay. So how do you help them get better leverage, get better scale, optimize their time? Mm -hmm. And so when you're able to walk in and say, hey, I know how we can get you to 60, 70, 80, 100. Mm -hmm. You know, Bob and Tracy have been doing 200 to 250 listings a year for, since 2008. Wow. So we're able to take that model, layer on technology and say, we know how you're a top producer. You have an amazing business. Mm -hmm. Join us, partner with us, and we'll show it, show you how we'll double your business. Mm -hmm. We'll double your business the next year. Again, our partners in Canada, they joined us. They doubled in their first six months. They already doubled again in the first six months of this year. Wow. So if you're Let's say they were doing 100 transactions, they were doing 200, and now they're doing 400, just for numbers, just based for, on volume. Yeah, correct. yeah, yeah. That, I mean, that that's phenomenal. That is a real demonstrable value where you can sit down and say, "Here's the actual action steps you take." Here, this is not just lip service. This isn't, you know, I am, I have these general vague ideas on how to help you. So this is the model. We'll plug you in and your volume is going to quadruple and, and like let me put in perspective of this how i so we have a lead generation e-blast newsletter that goes out to all of our partners and i always like saying it like this i think it's a clever way you know if you send an automated test text message and it gets a response gets you an appointment gets you a, a piece of business mm -hmm. you know we had one it was a twenty-five thousand dollar commission that came from a, a text message literally like what's your roi on that well there's no cost to the text message so right. it's literally infinity yeah, but, it's, but not, yeah but so like that's a twenty five thousand dollar text message right it, it's so simple and so we try to make it like you said it's plug and play mm -hmm. our smart plans when someone registers with us it'll automatically nurture that lead mm -hmm. for pretty much the first 11 months mm -hmm. automated automatic based upon different things they do, based upon different data points in the profile. So if they do this, it'll shift it to a different plan, automated for our partners. Mm -hmm. So basically, of course, you know, we have calls in there. Basically, what they just have to do is make their calls. The, the platform will nurture mm -hmm. itself. So let's see, how much time in the day do you think they would need to dedicate to just their calls? And then how much time do you think it would take if they had to do their calls and manually perform all of these tasks? Well one of the big advantages we've had with chime is how we've been able to set it up and optimize the use of dialers that are mm -hmm. integrated native with the platform to increase the capacity and productivity of our isa team mm -hmm. it's the cornerstone of our business so you know if you think about like let's say your goal is to make 50 calls mm -hmm. in the past how much time would it take for you to dial the number let's say five seconds sure let's say 15 10 to 15 seconds for it to ring Mm -hmm. 10 to 15 seconds for you to leave the same voicemail over and over again. So, and then let's say your spot, your pickup rate is what? 5%. Sure. And you're going to have a, on average a three minute call with each of those. Mm -hmm. So you run through the numbers and you can quickly see how dialing the number, picking up, putting down the phone, 
leaving the voicemail. It's like that movie Pursuit of Happiness with, with Will Smith, yeah, yeah. where he refuses to put down the phone, so he, he saves those three seconds every yeah, time. Absolutely. It's That's like that. It's like that to the max, because mm -hmm. we're saving f 10 to 15 seconds every voicemail, because Chime is going to automatically leave the voicemail. Mm -hmm. We can preset it up so that it's all automatically going to send a, a text message as well in the event that they don't pick up. Mm -hmm. We can build out questionnaires. We can build out uh, different things so it's easier for ISAs to log notes mm -hmm. right in the platform. When they're dialing a number, when they're speed dialing, it's going to pull up that matching corresponding plat, uh, profile for mm -hmm. that lead. So in real time, they can have all the information from those notes mm -hmm. and then using the questionnaires, they can quickly add to the pertinent parts of that profile. Mm -hmm. All these things adds up and we've basically reduced the time it takes to complete those 50 calls by about 60%. Wow. So let me point out here that you're talking about saving three seconds, saving 15 seconds, saving 10 seconds. These are small things that, you know, your average team leader, your average agent is not going to think twice about, yet y'all are one of the top performing real estate teams in the entire world, right? So like you were said before, it's the it's the focus on these small things that you do frequently that really add up and result in tremendous success. So again, kudos to you for, for not undervaluing the small everyday tasks. That's that's uh, something that is that we see far too often in this industry. So um, again, just hats off to y'all. Well, Robert, thank you so much for coming all the way out here to Phoenix today. I really appreciate it. You've been a wealth of knowledge. Seeing y'all's transition and the increase that has come with your business um, has just been a phenomenal experience for us. And uh, we're really excited to have you on as a client. Well, thanks for having me. We're equally excited to be in business with you guys. Uh, we're having incredible results from using your platform. and. I'm really happy we found you guys, that you guys were willing to put your money where your mouth is and have mm -hmm. a trial with us. It worked out so well, and, and now we're off to the races. So thanks for having me out. Oh, my pleasure.